So Marion, when we first talked about coming here to Nashville or Centerville and doing a, a production, a scripture audio production with your church, um, Psalm 139 was one of the ones you brought up uh, right at the very beginning, mm. wasn't it? That was it, one of your... it was. This, this was actually the first one. If, if I wanted to encourage our congregation to memorize uh, the very next psalm or the only psalm, or the, this would be the one. Now, why is that? It, this is, has a lot of meaning for me. Uh, it was one of the first psalms that I've memorized in entirety, um, uh, very deliberately and very contemplatively. This has governed my, my prayer life and my thought life, and again, it continues to do that. Um, it, it starts off with a statement that, that we know that God has searched us and known us, and it ends with a continue uh, pleading with God, search me and see if there is anything wicked in me and lead me in this everlasting way because all this way that I have just contemplated on. Uh, God has loved us before we were even formed in the womb. He's known us, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. These thoughts are too high. And when trouble surrounds me, uh, even the darkness of the dark night of the soul, even that is light about God. And I can't go anywhere to flee from his presence. It, and that doesn't mean that I am trying to escape. That means in an emphatic way, wherever I go, there he is. And his right hand is there to hold me. And this is a psalm that I have used in very... Um, discouraging times, in spiritual uh, struggling, in spiritual battles, um, in times of reflection, in times when I am on seeking God, is there something in me that needs to be cleansed? Am I holding on to anything? Search me. I find that the, the verbiage of this psalm uh, just comes alive in my prayer life and begins to govern those petitions. Uh, but at the same time, it's always pulling me back up to who he is not just my felt needs, but really having this anchor uh, behind the veil, which is Christ in the heavenlies here governing uh, these things, knowing that what I'll say, knowing what I'll think, and yet uh, desiring this relationship with me. It's just a rich, rich psalm. One of the things that is such a delight about working with this psalm whenever I do a scripture audio production with this, whatever piece of music uh, we choose to sort of dovetail in with it, um, I'm always impressed with, with uh, this, the sense of, of mystery and almost darkness in this song where uh, the, the psalmist has such faith, but in the midst of, uh, a, 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 he paints a very gloomy kind of atmosphere where you're not really sure where he is and he's not sure um, you know, where exactly to turn perhaps. You have the sense that he may even be at ends, but that's okay, and he's okay with that because he has his faith in God, and his hope is uh, is, is settled there. And and from a musical perspective, that's that's such a treat to work with an atmosphere like that of of a little bit of darkness in the background. That's something that we don't really have in our music today, particularly our, our church music. Um, is it that that sense of uh, a little bit of gray tones? Yeah. So why is all of our hymnody written predominantly in, in you know major keys? Where are the where, where are the minors? Uh, where are are these questions that come up? And and yet the beauty of the Psalms is they they touch on every theological point that Pauline theology touches on in the New Testament. But rather than a didactic way, it does it in a, a psalm, in a poetic way, that are often expressions out of experiences of life. And that's why you don't necessarily follow a particular form uh, in the way that Paul did, because he's in experience. He's in the, the throes of a, of a deep, heavy experience, oftentimes a dark experience, and yet his thoughts and his theology drives him back up to the transcendence and the glory of God outside of himself. Uh, and that's where his hope is. That's what the song is about. That's what gives God the glory in the midst of the trial is when we have the song. That's why Paul and Silas could sing in the, the Philippian jail at night, and it was a powerful uh, thing that was going on. That's why Israel would sing uh, um, praises to God for his mercy endures forever, and their enemies would be slain. And so, yes, it's not an absence of the difficulties, but it is seeing God in the midst of them that makes them so glorious. And that's, that's my hope for your congregation. If I can help in any way, 
uh, to get to where that's just deep in everyone's bones. Um, I think it's, it's such a, a gift and a blessing. That's kind of been our theme today, going over these four Psalms, hasn't it? Uh, the, the theme of blessing. To, to know God at the level of meditation, the heart talking to itself, and, and also as we speak to each other to do that in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and in a, in a musical context. Um, I just uh, I hope that this is helpful for you and for your people, and we're looking forward to doing this again. I wanted to say thank you to Pastor Marion Lovett of Heritage Church in Centerville, Tennessee. Appreciate thank your you. being here. I appreciate your help, and, and this will be the, our first, and I'm eager to hear the, the musical setting uh, on which it is placed uh, and to be able to give us the the ability to memorize this one well and to use it for the rest of our lives in patterns for our worship and patterns for our praise.